The comfort zone for me at the minute is like, it's good. Like I always say to people, it's like, it's good to dip your toe in the comfort zone every now and again. Mm. But you don't want to set up camp there. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because it sort of destroys your dreams and aspirations. Like, because you'll just be sat there, just comfortable, which is good for some people. Mm. But for me, I need to push myself. Now, when we did it, it wasn't like that. It was learn how to tattoo and make money for the shop. Yeah. It wasn't like, const you, you've got, all oh, right, you're good at this, maybe focus on that and become better at it. Mm. Was it, you know what I mean? It was just like, you do everything, you take everything that comes in and you make money for the studio. And at yeah. that time, I didn't know. I was just like, that's sweet. I'm, I'm still tattooing, you know what I mean? Anything that come in. And I'm still like that now. Like people will be like, fucking hell. Like someone comes through the door and I've got time. I'll be like, yeah, I'll do it now. Mm. Yeah, I'll do an infinity symbol for you. Because them's your bread and butters them. Like that's if it. you get good at doing the little stuff where there's no room for mistakes. I've always said it. I'm just kind of slowing the process of me aging down. I want to be on the planet a little bit longer mm -hmm. so I can be around my kids. You know what I mean? So I'm there for them. I owe it to them and I owe it to myself to be better. It's 21st time every time Century Tattoo Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I'm Alex Lloyd and this is the 21st Century Tattoo. Nice to see you again. I feel like the first time I met you was back in like 2019. Liverpool convention. Liverpool convention. I mean, how's, actually, it, how's it looking? It's looking good. It's looking good. Sick. I've had a load of dot work around there and it's kind of fits yeah, in. Yeah, it looks good, man. Bro, it's healed so nice. I'm, I'm so always like, fucking hell, how does it heal? Especially when I do the, the inside bizzer. Yeah, so happy with it. Yeah, sweet, um, man. Yeah, it was cool. So it's, it's good to kind of come now. I mean, what, everything that's happened in that period of time, you know, COVID and the whole it. fucking shitloads. And yourself though, you're flying because I remember you was like asking questions at the time, like what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, well, I'm still and, asking questions. Yeah. No, no, it's yeah, no, see, always, but um, it's good to see, bro. Yeah, and you, man. Yeah, and thanks, thanks for kind of opening up. Um, I guess the question is like, how's life been, you know? How's it been since I last saw you? What have you been up to? Good, yeah, I'm good, you know. Uh, tattooing is, um, yeah, it's, but it's normal, it's chill. Yeah. Uh, it's busy. But my outside life as well, like I'm doing other things that are keeping me um, like occupied, like open water swimming and shit yeah. like that and doing... I was literally going to uh, ask you about just this. Just like doing different shit. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying life. Yeah, you mate, you're doing the maddest stuff. Are you still doing that open water stuff? And I've yeah. seen you've been doing a lot of like the ice baths and things yeah, like that. Talk put, to me a little bit about that. putting myself in like uncomfortable positions and stuff. It's... Uh, it's different, yeah. you know, just because I had to swim the channel, which was ter a terrifying idea for me, uh, just being like so vulnerable in that open space. And I'm terrified of the ocean, but at the same time, I love it kind of thing. Mm. But I needed to like get a little bit comfortable being uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because a lot of people ask me like, why'd you do it? Well, there is loads of benefits for it, but I just needed to be like, when my body's saying like, fucking, you've had enough, like, I needed to override that yeah. and just be comfortable in in them environments. How and it was good training though, because once I got in the ocean, like I was terrified, but I'd already had that um, that thing to fall back on. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm. The um, those situations where I've been. It sounds, it sounds mad. It's hard to articulate what I'm trying to say. No, no, I kind of, well, like I say, I kind of get it. Like, I think, it, I think it's, I'd love to do some shit like that. I love pushing myself out of my comfort zone. I think that's the only thing, that's, that's what you have to do in it. Yeah, of course. Um, and also like learning more about yourself and your limits. I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but yeah, what, what kind of, dr what, what was the kind of driving force to want to do that stuff? And um, what do you kind of get from it as well? Uh, lockdown was like, what kind of, was the catalyst behind it? Um, it was just one of them things. All the uh, gyms were closed, so I went, yeah. and went and swam in the lake because they couldn't close the lakes. And then off the back of that, I was like, I'll swim to the middle and then I'll swim to the end. And the next thing, it was like, I'll swim around it. And then you're like, what's next? You know what I mean? You always want to push yourself. So it just went from there. Then. It freaks me out of the water, man. Yeah, it does. Like, and I know that feeling. Like, I'll be in a lake and still I'll feel like I'm going to get hit by a shark. Mm. And all the way up to swimming the channel, I was seeing like shark tattoos and shark posts. And I don't know if that's because I'm, I don't, you know what I mean? I just, 
I was because I was scared of it. I'm maybe noticing shark posts more often. Yeah, and I was like, it's a sign. I'm gonna get eaten by a shark. Even like, though you know there isn't gonna be one, it's like if, if something caught the side of my leg or there something. is though there is sharks in the channel. Is there? Yeah, oh. but I don't think they're like that aggressive. But also, I seen a bit of information where it was like, and this is another thing that pissed me off. It was like, why have I read this now of all times? But it's like the great white as the capability to go in any ocean you know depending on food and stuff it's scared so if it wanted to and it needed to it could yeah you know what i mean and that's in the back of your head when you're swimming you're like fuck it out yeah <laughs> shit mate and like i mean what was the preparation for that like i mean i presume no one can just fucking just jump in the, in the channel and go a, for it a lot of the cold water swimming stuff yeah like a lot of sitting in the ice bath and just being in pain and just being used to that a lot of swimming like the lengths of lakes, mm. just putting the distance in, a lot of bulking. They, they said I had to put a lot more weight on. Yeah. Just so I could handle the cold and stuff. Would yeah. you do it again? Yeah, I'm doing it again this year. I see. Yeah. yeah nice <laughs> I've signed thing. up to do it again. Nice. So it's like an organised thing, is it? Like, do you do any for charity or? No, we was going, at the last minute, uh, we put a charity page on, but this time I think we'll do, you know, advertise that we're doing it for a charity a little bit sooner. Yeah. Make a bit more money. Sick. It's cool. I'd love it's, to try it's that. It's different. Yeah. I think an ice, I might start at an ice bath and just maybe shower, not going. You know what I mean? Cold shower, yeah. I mean, even that's fucking... It's yeah. hard, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's cold, man. But that, that's the point, isn't it? Because it's like the comfort zone for me at the minute is like, it's good. Like I always say to people, it's like, it's good to dip your toe in the comfort zone every now and again. Mm. But you don't want to set up camp there. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because it sort of destroys your dreams and aspirations. Like, because you'll just be sat there, just comfortable, which is good for some people. Mm. But for me, I need to push myself. And yeah. this, at, since lockdown, that was the catalyst for it all. Mm. So that's why it's like, it's good with tattooing. Like, it's took up a lot of me tattooing time. So I've, I've cut my days down and stuff. But at the same time, I'm enjoying it. And I feel like that's what it's about. Yeah. I was enjoying tattooing anyway, but I'm not just a tattooer. You know what yeah. I mean? And um, um, other things. So it's like, it's a, yeah, well, you don't, tattoo doesn't necessarily define you, yeah? No, no, it's like I'm grateful to do it because it's given me the opportunity, like loads of opportunities to travel and meet people. And mm. like, I'll always encourage someone to become a tattooer. But like, yeah. if, you, if you've got a little bit of like drawing ability, I'm like, do it. Yeah. Because you'll not regret it. Yeah, or literally anything, isn't it? Like, just try it if you shit it. That's what I, like, when I got into tattooing, I was the same. I was like, I enjoy creating and drawing and painting. I'll try it. I'll get an apprenticeship and I'll try it. And if I'm shit, then I'll give up. But if you never try it, you never know, do yeah. you? Yeah, and persistence pays off because I was shit when I began. It's mad, like, because I do a lot of roses. When I first started, I couldn't draw a rose. Yeah. And my head would fall off. I'd look at it and be like, I can't do this. Mm. Like, I don't understand, like, how it's done. And then just constantly being around it, you pick it up, don't you? Another quick one about hex cartridges from the Ghost Cartridge range. These are the most recently introduced, but these are the stipple shaders. They come in a number of configurations, but they're really good for anyone who likes to do a lot of stipple work, but over a larger scale. Make sure you grab these exclusively at Star with the code ATFCT10 for 10% off. So what, what for you then would you say is like, is the key to your success and, and, and getting yourself to this point now? Cause I mean, you, a lot of your stuff you do in like freehand, like these gap fillers, it's really cool the way you put them together and they've got a very distinct style. You know, you can recognize that that's a Paul Terry yeah, piece so. from a mile off. Um, how did you get to that? How did you get to that stage? I guess like maybe take me back to your kind of background and, and beginnings in that and where you, where you kind of started on that tattooing journey. Um, how, how it all happened was just accidentally really like I didn't set out to do a thumb rose and get recognised for it mm. um, but the the way it started I did one on my girlfriend and it was alright like I look back at it now and I'm like fucking hell as you do you know what I mean and then we was at a convention and my mate of mine we ended up tattooing back in the hotel room yeah. and he was like oh I want one like Chelsea's like I want a rose and I ended up tattooing his thumbs both of them and that was the birth of it, like, and it was a cool environment. Like we was all having a drink and that we was all together, just having a laugh. Mm. Um, a bit more, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, some people might be like, oh, in a, ta in a hotel room tattooing, but like, if it's clinical, you know what I mean? We know what we're doing. We set up like a clean yeah. set up. You do it anywhere. But yeah, that's what I mean. Do it outside. Like I've been tattooed at the top of a mountain and in a river, you know what I mean? So 
I don't know. Like I wouldn't be charging people, yeah. but for me myself. So yeah, that and once I tattooed his thumbs, it just blew up. And then it, it was like, oh, I want some of them. And then it just snowballed, yeah. which, which I'm grateful for because now I get to come in. I can still do the bigger pieces where I've got to do my homework and study. Because mm. for me, I'm not the best like at drawing, but my ideas, my creation, like I've always been created doing graffiti and stuff. So when it's something that's out of my comfort zone, I have to knuckle down, do my homework. And, and I can do it, do you know what I mean? If I put my mind to it, I can do it. Yeah. That's pretty much most things. Unless it's like hyper-realism, stuff like that. Just because I don't enjoy that process, it's a lot more methodical. And if I'm from the background that I've come up through, you know, like just the bold graffiti lines and bold colour, mm. that's where I find the enjoyment. Yeah. That's another thing probably why I ended up doing my style the way I do. Yeah, it's that like, like bold, striking. Yeah. Illus so, so a graffiti background. And I know I've seen you kind of like dabbling. I mean, you do a lot of this like calligraphy style now. Yeah, yeah. I've done little really bits. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that what you're kind of trying to focus on at the moment? No, or you... that's just for enjoyment. You know yeah. what I mean? Just to find something different. If I, if I see someone, I like it. Like I like black work, like bold, black, simple tattoos. Yeah. I love that. And I get loads of enjoyment out of tattooing them. So... It's, it's one of them. Same with the Cali stuff. I've seen it and I was just like, this looks sick. Yeah. Do you so, still do a bit of graffiti? Yeah, I still go out now and again. Write, write my name and that. All legal now though. I'm yeah. too old to be get, getting chased by the police. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Mate, it's mad how many artists I've spoke to who've got a graffiti background. There's such a crossover. Uh, really cool. Like, a lot of the custom lettering guys. Um, yeah, I mean like, so like Connor Pembroke, done my fingers. A load of the, like there's some serious you call it's artists. It's just a, a start in it. Like it's a, a was a point where I was creating stuff mm. and then it's led into tattooing. I yeah. Think a lot of people, like some people might have a like a university sort of background where they studied fine art or something. Mm. But I just learnt mine myself and just through paint just through, um, spray painting. Yeah. And it kind of crossed over. But what was your did you have a, like a traditional apprenticeship? Yeah, very traditional apprenticeship. How did you find it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I got blamed. The usual, mate, you get blamed like shit rolls downhill. Yeah. Unfortunately, done it. But yeah. uh, when you're starting off, it's like. I wasn't bothered. Like, I'd go in the studio and I'd be, be like, just always knocking about there, um, asking for a job, asking if I could go have a go with the machines and stuff, and just being a pest, really. Just mm. making sure I was there and going, like, I'll, I'll, I'll be the apprentice, blah, blah, blah. And then, fortunately, um, one of the guys left and the one who was the apprentice stepped up and they needed someone to like brush up and stuff. And he was like, they rang me and was like, do you want to come in? And and that was it. As soon as my foot was in the door, like yeah. I would have done it for free. Mm. But That's it, isn't it? It's like, I, I feel like that process, that apprentice is so, so different now. And whoever people are kind of getting into the industry, experience it as much. I mean, I only, I had my apprenticeship, what, getting on for six years ago, but it was very traditional, probably because of the studio I ended up in. Yeah. Quite a bike around, but I don't think there's as much of that now. Um, do you think, do you think um, apprentices coming through now are getting the same kind of experience? Um, Maybe in some, some parts of the world and some studios, but I feel like if I had an apprentice, I'd focus more on, building them up like I'd want them to represent not represent me but if I'm the one teaching them I'd want to focus like just getting them to the best of the ability now when we did it it wasn't like that it was learn how to tattoo and make money for the shop yeah it wasn't like you've got all oh, right you're good at this maybe focus on that and become better at it mm. was it you know what I mean it was just like you do everything you take everything that comes in and you make money for the studio. And at yeah. that time, I didn't know. I was just like, that's sweet. I'm, I'm still tattooing, you know what I mean? Anything that come in. And I'm still like that now. Like people will be like, fucking hell. Like someone comes through the door and I've got time. I'll be like, yeah, I'll do it now. Mm. Yeah, I'll do an infinity symbol for you. Because them's your bread and butters then. Like that's if it. you get good at doing the little stuff where there's no room for mistakes. I've always said it. It's like people shy away from that stuff and go, no, I just want to do big stuff. And like, that is what like, makes a I'm, good tattoo, I yeah feel. I'm so I'm so grateful for doing all of that line work hell of a lot of like little script bits yeah and mums dads on wrists doing them upside and, down yeah yeah, yeah stars are well had <laughs> yeah because it's almost sometimes it's more difficult for placements the clients can be a little bit different well you've only got five lines in it or so many lines you can't hide it's got to be, per yeah, it's got to be it. perfect yeah and um yeah I, I think I, I'm glad I did that because yeah, then it helped me focus on getting my yeah, mind it, help, it helps a lot. 
Mm. But, you know what I mean, each to their own, if they want to just concentrate, like I won't begrudge someone who can do an apprentice for, do an apprenticeship for six months, already find the style and then the booming, they've got to rec the recognize straight away. And then that's good for them. Like yeah. for me, it took a long time. I was cleaning the shop for three years and cause I'm quite um, a bit of a perfectionist. I, r I ran the shop really well. Like with the, the bookings, like we used to, I used to go through the diary on a Monday and it was all in them days, like uh, scripts from the Bible, mums, dads, whatever. And then the, the rows are what, usually quite the same stuff over and over again. Go straight through it, get it all printed out on the, get like your chopping script, do it all and yeah. then hand carbon it. And it was all done for the week then. That was every Monday. So yeah. all the week could be done. And Sick. even that process alone, you know, just because my handwriting is shit, even though I do graffiti, but it's all like, you know what I mean? It's a different form. Mm. But that alone was like muscle memory. So when it got to the time when it was tattooing it, it was already there. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I, I traced a thousand letters out and stuff. Yeah. It was like, with my mentor, it was like, draw a rose, draw another rose, draw another rose. And I was like, and that got to the point where I, yeah, I'm now- It's I in there, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can do it kind of like- I even kind of getting down to like shading it without references and stuff. Yeah, you you just kind of, yeah, you solidify it. Have you had an opportunity to pass on your knowledge to someone else if you had an apprentice? Uh, would you have an apprentice? Well, would I? Uh, yeah. Have I had the opportunity? Yeah. No, to, to um, so you've, have you had an apprentice in the past? No, no. No? No. Would you ever? Probably. Yeah. But at the minute, it's, we're in a big shop mm. and I don't know. Like we've had a shop apprentice where we've always, like in my last shop, we had shop apprentices and we all taught them stuff. But I don't know if I'd want someone, you know, just, just like imagine one person in the shop for me, studying my stuff, doing my, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. And because my back, uh, tattoo background was like, yeah, you got to work your way up from the bottom. You got to do your cleaning and stuff. Mm. I'd be like that, not as strict as it was for me, but I feel like, what I'd be teaching someone could change their life for, for the better. You know what I mean? I'll always encourage them to do it themselves, like at conventions, like I said earlier. Mm. I'll be like, become a tattooer, do what you need to do, like make it happen. But if they were, if I was teaching them my knowledge, I'd be like, you kind of need to earn it as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? Put the hours in. If you could give me that. And I wouldn't be like making them, you know how it was, you'd set the, artist down clean up set them back up mm. I won't be doing none of that but I think the, the, I would want them um, do you know what I mean to to learn how to do the orders and yeah. learn from the bottom up get a strong foundation because not only that sorry to interrupt no 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 that's uh, it what I found when I did it that way like three years of cleaning and running the shop before I became a tattooer I was already a shop manager mm. I already knew the ins and outs and how to how to run a shop you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's a good bit of knowledge. Even though at the time I was like, I'd be going in the room going, come on, let me tattoo this little heart. And they'd be like, no, you're not ready yet. Yeah. But that knowledge alone, it's not, because at the end of the day, it's not just about the tattoo inside, is it? There's more to it. 100%. If anything, the tattooing comes, the actual physical using the machine comes at, right at the end. Yeah, it? later down the line. You're observing everyone. I think that's why it's like, it's good to have an apprentice for the shop because they see how every other person works, picks it all up. You can, you know what I mean? You can understand the way people, like the hygiene aspect. Yeah. Yeah, and um, how to interact with people as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. a lot. There's a lot to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's worrying because obviously you see a lot of these kind of, and um, now with how much material is available online, you know, you tattoo schools and courses and bits and pieces. Anyone who kind of takes up that side of it. I mean, there's there's plenty of, of, of talented artists that come through who've done that, but you're not maybe going to get that vital studio experience at an early stage. No, you're not. Um, like, like you can't begrudge him for trying it. Yeah. Because if 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 I, I wouldn't have had my opportunity, that could have been a possibility for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I would have been like, I'll pay some money, but at the same time, you don't get. You know what I mean? It's a crash course. I don't feel like you get what's needed to become a tattooer. Mm. You'll get thirty percent of it. You know what I mean? Just the basics, how to set up, out the, the needle depths and stuff like that. But there's so much more to it in there. Oh, one hundred percent. If you're enjoying the episode this week, don't forget to leave us a rating and a review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Talk to me a little bit about um, about Ball Street then. How long you've been here? How long the shop's been here? And um, and kind of, yeah. So yeah, five years. 
uh, part of Old Street, maybe even longer. Um, I can't really <laughs> remember. Yeah. But yeah, it's good. There's nine of us in the shop, so it gets busy. Yeah, that's big, isn't it? And it's, it's a good shop. environment, do you know what I mean? It's a good environment. Uh, we kind of push each other a lot. We've been quite chill on the convention scene at the minute. Everyone wanted to knuckle down, mm. um, concentrate on their artwork. But yeah, it's good. You see, there's a lot of like, I feel like there's a lot of private studios popping up now. Do you prefer working in a big, in a big team, in a, like a large environment, like a in a large space, or would you ever, would you ever want to work um, on your own? It depends. Sometimes you just can't be asked with the, cons the the noise, but other times I like it. I, I buzz off it when we're all in. It's mm. it's good energy. But then there's sometimes you know, like if I've been up early, I've been in the lake and you're knackered, and it's just like pure chatter. Yeah, you're just kind of like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah. But the majority of the time, it's all good. You know mm. what I mean? Yeah, sick. Your missus tattoos as well, yeah? Yeah, she's got her own shop. How, yeah, um, I taught her how to tattoo as well. Yeah, well, I helped, helped her along the way, should I say. She'd probably mm. be like, no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, because I think, I'm pretty sure she was working at that convention when I was there at Liverpool. Yeah, she would have um, been. What, um, well, how did you guys meet? And, and through, kind of, through tattooing. Yeah. And uh, she sort of shown a little bit of initiative and said she wanted to be a tattooer. And then we started dating. And she'd be like, oh, I'd love to do it. And I was like, you can do it then. Mm. You can actually do it. Like if, like I said earlier, if you've got like a little bit of drawing knowledge yeah. and you're persistent to anything, you know what I mean? You can make it happen. Mm. And um, it worked out. Like I let her tattoo me, just sort of showed her the basics. And then we found a studio that needed an apprentice. And I was just like, and we knew him, you know what I mean? And that was it then. I was like, she'll do it. She'll work her way up. And she did. And then yeah. she's smashing it now. Yeah, she's so got her own studio. But she shares it. It's like um, her and a mate own it. Yeah. Could you work together? Do you, have you ever worked together? Um, I wouldn't want to. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I no. know that sounds mad. No, no, but... because I because I work with my missus. Oh, do you? Like, if you'd have asked me, I would have been like, no fucking way. But it's. I've always said this. Like, obviously, we love each other and we love spending time with each other. But if we was constantly around each other and then going home, mm. you know what I mean? We get no break. Yeah. yeah like having to keep that kind of work and uh, and home life separate well too much of anything's bad so like if you you know what I mean we'll sp if you spend too much time with someone depends how your frame of mind is like you can end up concentrating on the bad traits in them you know what I mean mm. it's very hard to you know overlook it I don't know it depends if, if you're getting irritated you'll allow them little things yeah. not saying she does that but I mean in general I wouldn't want that because maybe that too much time with that same person it end up sour in the relationship. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. We could definitely, but I don't know. Like, I like keeping it like yeah, yeah, having it like that for sure. Um, takes the pressure off, doesn't it? I, I don't so. actually, I don't actually think I've asked you as well. Why Pablo Pablo? Where does the name come from? Um, it's Cat Empire song. Ah. It's at the end of a song, and it, I like it because nobody knows apart from a select few, and when they do. I'm not buzzing with it. Like they'll go Cat Empire and I'll be like, give them the nod, like, you know. Cat Empire is that kind of like, um, isn't it like jazzy hip hop sort it's of stuff? Yeah, it's hard to say. They're from Australia. There's like 11 in the band. There's um, trumpets, uh, decks. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah, a lot going right, on, yeah. but it, it's really good music, like really good. Yeah. And just at the end of a song, it goes, Pablo, Pablo. Yeah. And I was like, go on, yeah, I'll use that. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's cool, man. Um, right, let's because I like to touch on this. It's always a lot of the title artists that watch this want to know um, on the nerdy bit. Uh, I would love to know what your kind of ideal and what your daily setup is for your pieces. What you kind of uh, what equipment you use in inks, needles, all of that good stuff. Um, and now I know you're sponsored by Amala. Do you use a lot of those cards? So are you still using? I'm still um, trying to transition to the wireless. Yeah, like I love it. Do you know what I mean? The, the freedom, like just to get up and move around and tattoo yeah. without the wires. But at the same time, I've done 10 years of lining with open nines or like something similar. Was it, are you, is it black? Was it black hole you were using? It used to, but I've gone to lockdown needles. Right. Um, and with mags and I use a, a nine, loose nine, uh, depending on the area. Like if it's, I do a lot of faces, so I change that up. I'll use like a, a tight nine or a straight nine and 15 mag and a free. Mm. But with mags, as long as it's curved and we freeze, I'll use anything. 
And then a Marla one's the good, you know mm. what I mean? I've, I was lucky enough to get a sponsor and I was like, all right, I can work with these. Yeah. And I used them through the wireless, but for lining, it's the Anvil, me nice. chugger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my day-to-day -day machine, that's the one. Yeah, sick. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, and in terms of like your designs and your design process, is there anything that you're really trying to push at the moment? Do you have a lot, are you sat on like a lot of flash and and what are your clients coming to you with a bit of a brief or how do you kind of tend to, tend to work? Uh, with it just being mostly the foot and roses and flowers and fillers, the, there is no sort of reference. They'll mm. have a photo that I've already done of a tattoo and I'll just change it up, like same, same, but different. Yeah. Uh, and it's freehand, so I just draw it on on the day. With that sort of stuff, I don't want to look too much at reference. I just like to be organic and just mm. see what happens. Like they, they give me the space. I love them awkward gaps. Yeah. I did one, I was guessing at Bint shop and the lad had just like a sliver and he was like... It's going to be awkward to fill. I was like, it's not. And I did a rose and it looked well good. Like yeah. it fit so well. So yeah, this yeah. was with, um, with Chris, yeah. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, sick. Um, uh, Black Tapestry. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Nice, no, cool, cool oh, setup mate, there, yeah. isn't it? Um, he's been on. He's been on the show as well, and he was actually over at Rich's, but getting that, getting a looking at getting a design ready for the convention. Yeah, cool guy. I love the way he's kind of got that studio set up. Do you do? Do you go down? Do many guest spots in London? Are you, have you got many coming up this year? Uh, I'm going to try to since lockdown, and then the swimming stuff. I sort of it's took a backseat, you know, guesting. Mm. Um, When's that swim then? This in August. August, yeah. And at least, well, at least the weather will be better. Be before lockdown, I was doing loads of guest spots and loads of conventions, and it was good. But when lockdown happened, it sort of I valued my time a little bit more. <clears throat> yeah, you know what I mean. It just solidified that my time's more important than so. Like instead of making sure I book the week out, I'll be like, oh, I'll have that time off. Yeah. I can do a bit of drawing or I can do a painting or I can go to the gym or just do something different, you mm. know what I mean? Than just constantly burning myself out, tattooing. Yeah, 100%. And it's good that you've kind of, I mean, how many years into tattooing are you now? 13. Yeah, so you're, it's, 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 yeah, it's cool that you can kind of just maybe handpick what you want to yeah, do and be able to give yourself I'll that. St I still, like, if someone says, I love your work and then it's not really something that's mine, I won't refuse it, mm. you know what I mean? And I'll just be like, yeah, sweet, I'll do it. Can you ever see yourself getting to a point where you like put the machine down and and and, and kind of stop tattooing? No, not really. Yeah. I love it too much. Just it's not even the tattooing; it's the 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 people. You mm. know what I mean? Meeting the people. I've been quite lucky throughout my career. Uh, you sometimes hear people whinging and stuff, but my apprenticeship like it had its shit times, but. It, it was good mostly and mm. then like the people I've met along the way artists and that so and traveling so I wouldn't want to let that down like if I won the lottery I wouldn't stop tattooing at all yeah just off the, you'd get a message on my Instagram saying like I'm off the coast of Greece on my yacht if anyone wants a free tattoo you gotta like kayak to me yeah or I'm gonna be at I'm gonna be at this part of the world so I'll set up in someone's shop mm. come get a tattoo yeah just for the interaction and you know what I mean you keeping it moving yeah I'm the same in it I guess I guess it's the, it's, that is the case with creatives isn't it like you never I'd ne you never I'd want all, you'd always if, want if some it's, outlet it's in us isn't it you know what I mean mm. even from a young age like I was always like doing making stickers or like the graffiti side of yeah. it it's sort of a create there's something in me that I want to create and do stuff. Mm. Is there any creative avenue that you still want to explore and that you feel like you haven't yet? Um, Anything on that like bucket list? Not really. Like painting would be nice. Um, it'd be nice to make money off painting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just sit in a certain environment, music on and just create that way. Mm. It might be different, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a, a long way away from that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, it's actually quite a good point for me to ask you the question that was left for you from the previous guest. And that was... What do you see yourself doing in your last five years of tattooing? Yes, we said like that you wouldn't stop tattooing, but let's say your your last yeah, five, yeah. I'm, I'm getting a lot older. It depends. Like, I, I know it's reverting back to what we was on about, but the whole me trying to push myself into that, 
is I want to, I'm kind of slowing the process of me aging down. I want to be on the planet a little bit longer mm -hmm. so I can be around my kids. You know what I mean? So I'm there for them. I owe it to them and I owe it to myself to be better. So like all the, the certain diets that I'm doing and the constant training, like just trying to be better. So I'd hopefully be tattooing until I'm 80. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's not probably, I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit um, optimistic. I don't know if that's the right word, but. Yeah, I want to be tattooing till till the bitter end. Yeah. But the last five years, I don't know. I've not even thought that far ahead, to be honest, mate. Mm. I'm, o I'm only like a couple of months in my diary ahead. I don't like being, you know what I mean? I know I should have a plan in place, but I'm a little bit too chill for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's, it's own a shop and it can run itself and I can bring a new, new wave of tattooers through mm. and like... Be become well known and have a good reputation that sounds good but at the minute i'm just focusing on this year yeah and then next year i'll be the same i'll focus on that and yeah no it's time. just taking it one day at a time isn't it pretty much i know it sounds cliche and it's like everyone's like oh yeah living the now but that's what i like to do like from a young age i always remember like we'd go away or even like you'd be going on holiday and people are like, you're excited. Mm. And, it, and it, I wouldn't be excited for it until I was there. You know what I mean? There's no point. If I'm going away in two months, what's the, and people are like, oh, I can't wait, can't wait. And I was just like, nah, until, yeah. until, my, until my feet are on that plane, then I'll be like, right, it's happening. But until then I'm like, Am I, I'm in the now, I'm going to concentrate on now. Yeah. And that sort of applies. That's just a weird example, but that sort of applies to like, just being more present instead of, thinking too far ahead because you don't actually know do you it's never guaranteed no nah, i mean i'm very much i'm still trying to learn that um trying to yeah live in the now and and enjoy the make the most of the present i almost kind of live in live in a kind of cycle of setting goals and yeah and, and getting no, that, there but that's important you've got to you, but if you if you just keep pushing them off into the distance, like you can't ever get there, and it's like feels like you're just running on a treadmill well, and not going anywhere. If it's a weird one because you kind of need to because it's responsible, but at the same time, imagine if you wanted to become a certain type of athlete within five years and not you concentrated on getting there, and time moves fast, man. Like as you get older, and then you got there, and then you was like, it's sweet, but you've missed because you were so focused on that you've missed out on all you know not took it in yeah not, you know all the hard work and stuff yeah it's about balancing it like taking that the process in do you mm. know what i mean instead of like i want to be the best tattooer within 10 years it's like the, the whole journey towards that is is the gold bit you know what yeah. i mean the whole learning process yeah i just want to be the best version of myself here now and not wishing your life away do you know what i mean like it goes back to what it's you just said i feel like it's important yeah. we all do it man and sometimes i'll just sort of drift off and do shit but mm. you're a family man you know you've got is it two kids two kids two dogs one dog one yeah, dog one chihuahua Crump, really yeah. crumpy it's fab, isn't it? <laughs> always see him on instagram <laughs> um i know people love him he yeah. used to come in here before lockdown, but lockdown sort of turned him into a bit of a recluse. Oh. You know I mean, he doesn't like other people now. He got so close to the family unit that anyone else outside of it is getting barked at. Really? Yeah, but he was quite sociable at first. It's like protective? Yeah, just because he got so used to four of us. Mm. And then like the people that come in and out of our house, like grandparents and stuff. Yeah. I suppose Trowers are a little bit nappy anyway, but I kind of felt that's what happened to him. It's just pretty shit. Yeah, man. Like, I, I mean, I haven't actually got any kids. I guess like, as you, as you kind of progress in your career and you get a bit of like, what, what, what kind of is that, is that driving force and what's that motivation? As you kind of get further in your career, do you feel like um, you have more of a duty to, yeah, like you, like, like you said, you know, you've, you've got to look, you've got to look more responsibility, look after kids, look after your kids. Yeah, and, as you get older. Yeah. Like, even down to drinking and stuff like that, I'm a little bit more like I can't be arsed with it because I'd rather be fresh on a Sunday, you know mm. what I mean? So we can go out and do something with the kids. Yeah. But yeah, I think that just comes with age. Some people get on it at an early age. Like I was a bit of a a dickhead. I don't know what most lads were, you know what I mean? Young, doing stuff. Yeah. Um, taking all sorts of substances. But now it's kind of like I've done that and I want to better myself, like what you mentioned then like I do have a duty to be a better version of myself so going out getting bladdered and mm. stuff like that and you can't do it anyway when you're tattooing yeah. like you owe it to yourself and your customers to be 
on a good level. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. One hundred percent. If you can do it, then good on you. Like that's sweet. Because some people can drink and it won't affect them. But for me, like I remember tattooing once on a hung- when I was hungover, and that was it. Then I was like, I'm never doing this again because mm. it was so uncomfortable and just like. Yeah, it's not worth it. No, it's not good. No. Well, you, you answered what I was trying to. Yeah, trying to ask. Yeah, we, you got there, there, we got there. We got there. Yeah, man. Yeah, sick. Right, little word about some of my favorite cartridges from Ghost, these are the Nano. And obviously, as the name suggests, they're designed for a lot of the finer work. These go all the way down to a 0.18 mil, up to a 0.35. Now, the ones I've got here are a three-liner in the 0.2 and a one-liner in the 0.25. Make sure you go and grab yourself some exclusively from Star. If you use the code ATFCT10, you get 10% off as well. Do you have, do you have a question that you want to leave for the next guest? What would it be? Um... All right, yeah. If um, you could be anything or do anything that wasn't tattooing, what, what, you know what I mean? Like if someone could say, right, I'll give you a, a dream job, even though tattooing's a dream job, what yeah. would your other job be if you could do it? Like mine, I think I'd want to do music. Yeah. Because that's still like a form of creation. And, and I don't know. I don't know what avenue of music. Well, like a producer? No, I don't know. I really don't know, but... Music is like, it's like a big thing in my mm. life. Like I'm always listening to music. Yeah. Um, so. Goes hand in hand with it, with, with working as well. Like, do you know what I mean? All depends on what you've got, like what music you've got on. Um, yeah, so important you know, kind of creating a vibe. Like I used to do a lot of DJing. Don't do it as much now. But yeah, like I've always sick. said, if I wasn't a tattoo artist, I'd be a DJ or I'd be an F1 driver, I think. <laughs> yeah, sick. It'd be one of those but two. But the, the DJing's it's similar to tattooing because you can travel the world with your job. You know mm. what I mean? It'd be top. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And collect collecting music, that's another side of it as well. Like collect a lot of records. Um are you have you put have you do you play any instruments? Are you are you, are you I musical can, like, in that way? I know a few notes on the guitar and the piano. Yeah. Um I did have decks when I was like 16, 17. I couldn't sort of, I just got them to fucking, you know, do the spin back. Yeah, and yeah, then you yeah. bring the next song in. I couldn't actually beat mix, but yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's difficult on turntables as well. Um, yeah, yeah man. it is. <laughs> yeah, proper. Mate, I w- I'd love to know, like, do you, do you feel like you've you've got to where you want to be then? And, and maybe in the process, like, what are you most proud of what you've achieved? Yeah, man, I feel like I'm I'm at a level because I'm comfortable coming in and the job's not stressful. Yeah. You know what I mean? So there's the success right there. And I can kind of come in and just not do what I want, but I'm, I'm getting to do what I want and the bills are paid and I'm happy doing it. So yeah. that's, that to me, that's success. Mm. And then what was the second bit? Like what, what? In your career, maybe, or in your in your life up to now, what are you most proud of? Um, what am I most proud of? We're going deep, mate. I know. Yeah, I like space and time and physics. Like, let's talk about it. But go. Uh, what am I most proud of? Like, I'm proud that I've got my kids. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't like. I've won awards and stuff, but I can't be like, oh, I'm, I'm proud of them. Like I'm buzzing that I've got them. Mm. I don't. I don't know. What am I proud of? Like I, I'm proud where I am, because I feel like from where I was, you know, coming from school, mm. I wouldn't have been sort of. They wouldn't have said like he's going to be successful. I felt that. Do you know what I mean? I felt yeah. like because we was we were stupid and stuff. Um, and it's I'm kind of like I'm doing all right, you know what I mean. I'm, I'm proud of that. Like look look where I've because I've had friends that have gone downhill, and you know what I mean. I could have been one of them. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I'm proud that where I'm at now and the way I am mm. is uh, it's good. Yeah, you know good I mean? for you, man. Yeah, I'm the same, man. Like. I, when I left school, I didn't do particularly well because I just didn't really take it all in. I never really, it's never really enjoyed I was it. An academic in the and, slightest. Yeah, there was that vibe where it was like, "Fuck!" Like I haven't done, I haven't achieved what my my parents wanted me to achieve, what I thought I should have achieved. Yeah, that's the end of it, you know. Like I'm not going to be able to to maybe do what I want to do at uni. 
and you feel like your life's over at 18 do you know what I mean it's it's and like, it's it's scary so yeah I mean congrats like honestly massive respect for, for what you've managed to achieve like within the industry and 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 like your you know your work like you're incredibly talented and it's, it's good to sit down really my and, man yeah 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 <laughs> no it's, it's true it's true bro and it was great when I mean I wanted as soon as I saw you at the convention I was I'm, like yes I'm, I'm getting there like I still feel like I can be better mm. always yeah but yeah, it's it's nice to hear when people say like, "I love you stuff." It's mm. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When people are on holiday and they'll message me, go, "Oh, someone's just come up to me and said is that a, a Paul Terry Rose," and I'll be like a little bit embarrassed, like, "Oh, it's kind of cringy," but it's like, "Mate, you people know who you are." And I'm like, "Fuck." Yeah, it's weird, especially. I started off in St. Helens in, in the back room in the kitchen, mm. and even then, like going back from what I said, like I felt like the teachers in school would have pin me down to be non-successful and then in in the studio I felt like the underdog you know what I mean yeah and I've, I've come through you know what I mean I've, I've I've outshined a few people that was around me at that time who kind of not put me down intentionally but just didn't bring me up you know what I mean mm. as you know I've had on in the opposite side I've had people like really encouraging in the industry yeah but it's good that I'm at this place now and they'll be like, oh, fucking hell, he's actually doing all right, the lad. 100% right, Because at yeah. first it was like, you're taking too long, you're fucking, you know, your lines are shit. I'm like, of course they are. I'm mm. learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, mate, I mean, I'm yeah, massive respect and, and yeah, I look forward to kind of seeing where you take it, you know? Sweet. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been good. I've, I've been, like, I could literally, got so much to ask, but um, yeah, thank you really for your time and, Pleasure, um, dude. Yeah, Pleasure. nice one. Appreciate it, man. It's all good. Let's We've, get um, on the Mortal Kombat and get your whooping, yeah, let's, lad. Let's fucking do it. Yeah, all right. Let's fight and talk, bro. Um, we'll have to do this drawing challenge as well. We've got yeah, a little drawing sweet. challenge to do. Um, so we'll let's set that up now. We've got a, a piece of A5 paper. You've got a BIC. You've got a HB, a 2B, and a half mil fine liner. Quick fire, general, general knowledge general questions. Knowledge Although questions. you can choose the subject. We're we'll going music. Okay, cool. And I'm going to give you three minutes to draw, draw. a realism trainer. Three, three, three two, one. Go. What's the name of Dua Lipa's 2020 album? Oh, fuck knows. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of this, I reckon. Matt Goss, Luke Goss, and Craig Logan made up which band? I've not got a clue, man. Uh, in what year did the Beatles split up? I've <laughs> not got a clue. <laughs> What's rapper P. Diddy's real name? I've not got a clue. All right, complete this right, Spice Girls good. lyric. If you want to be my... You've got to get with my you friends. You've got to get with my friends. That's it. Name the song and the artist for the following I'm lyric. Foolish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm foolish, maybe I'm blind, thinking I can see through this and see what's behind. Who was that? No, no, Fuck, no. these are hard. Which two musicians collaborated on Another Way to Die, the theme song to 2008's 007, Quantum of Solace? Say that again, I wasn't listening. Bro. Which two musicians collaborated on Another Date, Another Way to Die? Uh, was it Adele? Or someone else? I don't know. Uh, Gary and Martin Kemp were in what band? Oh, Spandell Ballet. Yeah. In what oh. decade? He's got one. In what decade was pop icon Madonna born? Uh, 70s. Which two country singers famously sang together on 1983 song Islands in the Stream? Islands in the Stream. Yes. I've not got a clue. No. All right, here we go. How many permanent teeth does a dog have? Four. What's that? That's not music. No, I'm, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm not sure. Man. Hit you with the curb. We've got one minute. You're halfway through. One minute 30 left. What's the most sold flavour of Walker's Crisps? What's the most what? Sold, sold. Oh, flavour. Oh, onion, innit? It's got to be. All right, what's the full postcode of the Houses of Parliament? Fuck knows. <laughs> <laughs> what right, does that's the, not right, that's you, is it? What does the Latin word tempest mean in English? Tempest? Yeah. Rage, maybe? How many? What was it? Oh, do, do we not find out the answers yet? No, no, no. How many chuckers are there in a polo match? How many? How many what? Chuckers. I'm not sure, dude. Okay. On average, how far away is the moon from the Earth in miles? Uh, Twenty-one miles. Is that right? Twenty-one miles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it? Twenty-one, as in twenty-one thousand. No, twenty-one miles. It's not that far, is it? <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> it is. Let me find you. It's actually two hundred thirty-eight thousand. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. That's, that's the one. Yeah. <laughs> right. What's longer oh, wow, then? Yeah, not twenty-one miles. Is it? <laughs> How's the trainer coming on? Shit. What have we got? What, what is I it? Is it a dunk or a? I don't actually know. It's, I was going to draw a croc and then I changed my mind because it's, it's not a shoe. It's a bit like a. It's a bit like an Adidas. I know a shell toe, but shell toe, yeah. Um, I need to see one in front of me. Even all right, what's longer, on. a nautical mile or a mile? A nautical mile. Yeah, which country is the in the world is believed to have the most miles of motorway? Germany. Austria. Right, that's it. Time, time's up. Put your pencil down. Mate, it's shit, that. It's How's it looking? Like Realism trainer. Bobbins. Smashed it. Bobbins. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. Nice, mate. If you can sign that and print it and date it, that'd be brilliant. And we'll enter that into the uh, drawing challenge competition at the end of the series. Oh, you're joking, aren't you? Yeah. Solid contestant there, mate. Nice one. It looks like a five-year-old drew it. Thanks for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the episode this week. Don't forget to head over to YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to leave us a rating and a review as well on Spotify or podcast, wherever you listen to them. Really helps the podcast grow. Massive thank you for all the support so far, all of the comments, and to our sponsor, Ghost Cartridges for season two. I'm Alex Lloyd, and this is a 21st Century Tattoo. Get on the Mortal Kombat and get your whooping, yeah, lad. Let's, let's <laughs> yeah, all right, let's fight and talk, bruv.